Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss the difference between the verbs have, have got and got. Even if you're pretty sure that you know the difference between have and have got, I do believe that you will learn new pieces of information after watching this lesson. So let's begin. Have and have got. Have means to possess. We use the verb have to speak about things that we possess, to speak about our relationships, characteristics or illnesses. For instance, we can say I have a laptop, she has a headache, Alice has an interesting occupation, Tim had a scooter when he lived in Naples. Have got also means to possess something. It is synonymous to the verb to have. We can use it in the same situations in which we can use the verb have with the only difference. Have got is the synonym of the verb to have only in the meaning to possess something yeah, or to have a characteristic of something. So we can say I have got a laptop or she has got a headache. But for instance, in those expressions where the verb have is used with a different meaning, for example, to have breakfast, have got will never replace it. So as well as have, have got means to possess and we can say we have got a computer, he has got a pain in the neck, Dave has got a bicycle, or Anne hasn't got any friends here. From the examples on the screen, we see that we can mostly use have and have got interchangeably when we want to say that we have something. Now let's go through the key differences between have and have got. First and foremost, have is more formal than have got. So do you have any questions? will be a more formal question than have you got any questions. I've got a question is less formal. Then when it is used as the main verb, have is not contracted. Have got is usually contracted. Let's see. We normally say I have a friend who does yoga. But if we want to use have got, we will contract it. He's got a great collection of butterflies. They've got two tickets for the Saturday's game. Another difference is that have got is only used in the present simple tense. Have can be used in any tense. I have a cat. I have had it for three years. I used to have a parrot when I was a teen. However, when I was a child, I wanted to have a dog. In these three sentences, have is used in different tenses and in different forms. I have a cat is the present simple tense. I have had it for three years is the present perfect tense. I used to have is the past simple tense, but have is used here in the form of the bare infinitive. Remember, used to means I did it in the past. So in the past I had means I used to have. And in the last sentence, have is a full infinitive. I wanted to have. Now, if we take have got, the only thing that we can express with have got is the first idea. I have got a cat. Now I have a cat. The rest of the sentences will be impossible with have got. So you cannot say I have had got, neither can you say I used to have got, nor you can use have got like a full infinitive, I wanted to have got. No, that's incorrect. In the future, have got is also impossible. So we can say Jane says she will have some free time on the weekend, but we cannot say Jane says she will have got some free time. That would be incorrect. The last difference we need to mention is that have got cannot be used in expressions like have breakfast, have a bath, have a drink, have an argument, have a rest, have a nap, have a try, and so on and so forth. Remember, these are all those expressions where the verb have is not used in its traditional sense. In those expressions, it doesn't literally mean to possess. It means to eat, to drink, to be, and so on and so forth. For instance, to have breakfast means to eat your breakfast. To have an argument means to be arguing with somebody, etc. That's why, by the way, we cannot use these expressions in progressive tenses. For instance, we can say I'm having a cat, but we can say I'm having a bath or I'm having a cup of coffee. As have is not used in its traditional sense to possess something, 
have and have got in such expressions are not synonyms. Alice is having breakfast now. Usually she has a cross on for breakfast. Marco had an argument with his colleague yesterday. In the first case, have is used in the present progressive tense. Alice is having breakfast now means Alice is eating her breakfast now. Then we have usually she has a cross on for breakfast. We have the present simple tense. Both sentences are okay. Mark had an argument with his colleague yesterday. We use the past simple tense here. So we have the second form of the verb to have had an argument. But neither of the sentences can have have got. We cannot say Alice is having got breakfast now. Or usually she has got a cross on for breakfast. No. Have something for breakfast means actually not to literally possess it, but to eat it. The situation with Marco is similar. We cannot use have got instead of have, neither in one of these expressions nor in the past simple tense, remember. Have got exists only in the present. Choosing between have and have got, we should not forget about the present perfect tense of the verb to get. Though, as I said, have got originated from present perfect, it should not be confused with the present perfect form of get, which has several different meanings. Get, first of all, means to receive, like in I have got a letter from my friend in Tokyo, or to come to a place, like in I got home late yesterday, or she has got under my skin, or in get down. It also expresses a transition from a different state like in it was raining so I got wet or he got dressed or she got fired. So these are three main things that the verb get can express. Let's compare these examples. He gets lots of letters from his admirers. Usually, right? That's a typical situation he lives in. He got a couple of letters yesterday. A situation in the past. And what do we say in present perfect? He has just got another letter from a fan. Let's drop the word just and the sentence where the verb get is used in present perfect and a sentence with have got in present simple will be the same. So he has got another letter from a fan may mean he has a letter from a fan now or he has received a letter from a fan. Let's also compare these two examples. I have got home and I have got a home. I have got home means I have arrived home. And I have got a home means I have a home. For those people who use the form gotten, which we'll discuss later, these two sentences may sound very similar. And that may create ambiguity. So what are you talking about? Did you just miss the article or you do want to say that you have arrived home. When using have got and have, you should be attentive about your auxiliaries. Have and have got behave differently in different types of sentences. Have in have got is an auxiliary verb, while got is a main verb. When you use just the verb have, it gonna take its own auxiliary depending on the tense you're using. For present simple, for instance, it will be do or does. For present perfect, you'll get another have as an auxiliary. For instance, I have had a great time. Let's compare different sentences with have and have got. I have a new umbrella. In this sentence, have is a main verb. This sentence is in the present simple tense. It's a positive statement. We don't need any auxiliaries. I don't have a raincoat. Now it's a negative statement and in the present simple tense we need the auxiliary verb do to add our not to it because we cannot add not to the notion verb. We need an auxiliary. I don't have a raincoat. This is a negative statement. A general question will sound like do you have any special clothes for the rainy weather? Do you have? The auxiliary verb do comes to the first place in the sentence. Now let's see what we do with have got. If we need a positive statement, we say I have got a new umbrella. Remember, using contraction is more natural because in speech we usually contract have 
and have got. So I have got a new umbrella. Have got already has its auxiliary, have. Now, if it's a negative statement, we say I haven't got a raincoat. We connect the not to have. I have not got a raincoat. And in the question have as an auxiliary verb will come to the first place. Have you got any special clothes for the rainy weather? Got, of course, remains unchanged. This is what you should remember when you build negative statements and questions using have or have got. In have got, have is an auxiliary. With just have, you need to add a different auxiliary for the present simple tense as do or does. Remember that, please. Now, what if we want to express our idea in the present perfect tense? First and foremost, we won't be able to do that with have got, because as we already know, we cannot say I have had got a new job. It's incorrect. So we can only express our ideas in present perfect using the verb have, not have got. So we will say I have had a new job. Now the verb have has its auxiliary for the present perfect tense, which is have. And the verb itself is used in its third form, had. If we want a negative statement, we'll say, I haven't had a job. And the question will be, have you had a job? Okay, we've figured out the difference between have and have got, but sometimes you might hear got without have. This phenomenon we call bear got, because got is a bear, yeah? It is unprotected by any auxiliary. Bear got is the verb get used in its second form to indicate present tense possession. Even though normally in English we use got as a past tense verb or past participle, got may sometimes be used to speak about the present. So we can say we got a lot of projects going on right now instead of we have got a lot of projects going on right now. Why does that happen? Well, first of all, that happens in American English because Americans generally prefer have over have got. Then, as we have already learned, have got normally is contracted in speech. So we usually say I've, you've, they've, etc. We don't use have in its full form here. And as it is contracted in some informal speech, it often gets lost. So instead of I have got a lot of projects, you might hear people say I got a lot of projects. This contracted have is just dropped. That can also happen with the model expression have got to do something. This is where we can get gotta. Instead of saying I have got to go, some people may say I gotta go now. Apart from that, you might also hear phrases like do you got a cigarette or you got it, don't you? What happens here? Why do we use do with the past form got? Well, that's because have got is only used in the present, as I have already mentioned. It is used in the present to say that we have something. And as it is used in the present simple tense, some speakers tend to use the auxiliaries of the present simple tense, do and does, together with bear got. This is how we receive sentences like do you got a cigarette instead of have you got a cigarette and you got it, don't you, instead of you have got it, haven't you. The sentences that you see now on the screen are grammatically incorrect, but you might hear them in real-life situations. That's why you should know what they stand for. I don't encourage you to speak like that. Grammatically, the sentences are wrong. But you must be aware that such structures exist in the language. Now, we should also remember that got to do something is a modal. Have to is a semi-modal. That means that something is compulsory or necessary to do. You can check my video on semi-modals. There I give more examples and compare have to to must. The link will be in the description to this lesson. Now, let's recollect when in what situations we might need to use have to. For instance, we can say Tom has to finish his homework before his father comes from work. What we want to say is it's necessary for Tom 
to finish his homework before his father returns home. Tom might not want to do it, but he has to. You have to be an EU citizen to live in Spain that long. You have to be an EU citizen. There is no way you can be not an EU citizen and live in Spain. It's necessary for you to have appropriate documents. And you have to be kidding me. There is no way I can believe that what you're saying is for real and is not a joke. Do you remember the difference between I must do something and I have to do something, by the way? Please write your thoughts in the comments. So we revised have to. We know in which situations we use have to. Have got to do something is used for the same purposes in the same situations. So have to and have got to do something are synonyms. We can say Tom's got to finish his homework before his father comes home from work. You've got to be an EU citizen to live in Spain that long. And you've got to be kidding me. The same rules or differences apply here. Have got is more informal than have to. Have got can only be used in the present simple tense. If you want to express obligation in the future or in the past, you will have to use have to or some other structures. But apart from that, have and have got to do something are synonymous. Now let's talk about the difference between got and gotten. You might have heard that some speakers say gotten instead of got. Gotten is North American past participle of get. When we need to form the present perfect tense of the verb get in America or in Canada, we are going to say have gotten or has gotten. This is what books say. In reality, you may hear gotten in the USA or in Canada, but I would say that the majority of speakers will find it awkward. Got is more universally accepted. She has got used to having a glass of wine for dinner. Some people might express the same idea using gotten instead of got. They might say, she's gotten used to having a glass of wine for dinner. I heard they've got a new car. Again, some people might say, I heard they've gotten a new car. If you are not sure whether gotten sounds good to you or not, or you want to avoid ambiguity, you can always use the verbs to receive, to arrive, and to become instead of get. You might hear, James has gotten a parcel from home, or James has got a parcel from home. But also, you might hear, James has received a parcel from home. The last sentence is the most formal of these three, but at the same time it is the least ambiguous. We have just gotten home. We have just got home. Or we have just arrived home. And they've gotten married. They've got married. Or they've become married. It's up to you whether you want to sound more or less formal, or if you don't want to use have got in general, you might use its synonyms. So, to sum up, have and have got are synonyms. Both of them mean to possess. Have got can only be used in the present simple tense and is less formal than have. Thus, we can say that we have a wider range of situations where we will use have and not have got. Another important thing to stress is that have got is only the synonym of the verb to have when we speak about possessions, when we speak about having something, whether it is an object, a person, or an illness. When have is used in other expressions where it doesn't mean to possess, have got cannot be used as its synonym. We can say I have breakfast, but not I have got breakfast. This is all for today. I hope this video was useful. Subscribe to my channel not to miss other lessons and see you in the next video.